Hey guys, Retro Reviews here again with another Gundam video, uh, Master Grade video review. And this time I will be taking a look at the Master Grade 1 to 100 scale uh, Wing Zero from the Gundam Wing Endless Waltz OVA. So here we go to take a quick look at the figure itself. And as you can see here, very nice um, all around detail going on with the kit. I uh, do really like the color scheme, the primarily blue. Uh, well, the primarily navy blue going on with a little bit of red and white and the big elephant in the room about this kit is, of course, the wings, which we'll get into those in just a moment. But first, go ahead and just take a look at some of the details going on. Now, this is a uh, version Ka, by the way, technically. Uh, uh, Ka Tokihaji read or did the designs for all of the Gundam Wing Endless Waltz a series of mobile suits, so that includes, of course, the Wing Zero, this version that we see anyways, and he actually did do pretty much all of the uh, designs for every Master Grade that we see of the Wing kits, of course, with the exception being the Okawara uh, TV show designed version of the Wing Gundam, but as we see here, very nice detail all around and as you can see the decals on this kit suck I'm having to constantly reapply them they don't fit in the areas where they're supposed to uh, the borders around the decals especially this big feather one on here tend to show up after applying they're just annoying and the dry transfers are pretty big and just kind of See, we have that one right there, the Triple XG 00W0 model number for the Wing Zero, and some Colony Liberations organization on there, on the side of the leg, which you can't even see because it's not showing up, but right there down the side of the leg, uh, big Triple uh, XG stickers going all across the thigh and the back of the calf, right back there, and then big. Uh, dry transfers on the wings for Colony uh, Liberization Organization. And real quick, I do want to go ahead and take a look at the head sculpt. I do really like it. I like the big blue wings coming off of the side of the head. And I like the head camera. The eyes are green. The front head camera on the V-fin is obviously green. And then if we were to get LED... Whoa, that's too close. But, try to get an LED to shine in there and show off the green eyes, which it's not going to want to do. And we have the search eye. It's originally cast in clear plastic, but I painted over green. They do give you a clear, or like a uh, metallic green sticker to go underneath that, which I still ended up using. I just went ahead and also painted the search eye green, so that way it shows up a bit better. And, as you noticed, uh, the head camera at the top of the head, instead of being green is actually purple. So that is a really nice touch. It's a different um, take going on and if you could see back there it's purple all the way back there as well. So yeah, overall just looks very nice. Lots of cool stuff going on with this. Now, um, articulation wise, well real quick I did also want to show the um, cockpit hatch does open just like the Wing Proto Zero that I uh, recently reviewed and you can see Hero Yui just sitting in there all nice and comfortable and that just closes up now for articulation wise uh, standard articulation for Master Grade we've got pretty much everything is movable we do have the hinge at the base of the neck and the ball joint at the top so he can look side to side, up and down, kind of tilt his head back and uh, left and right a little ways. And that's one thing you do. I do want to point out is that these feathers are made using a rubbery plastic and they don't quite fit on the ball joints all too well. So they do have a tendency of falling off. So anyways, uh, we do have the arms do swing forward 
We do get a nice decent range out of those. And the shoulder is here on a hinge this way as well as um, this way. So universal hinge going on. The shoulder armor does get up out of the way pretty nicely. It's on a separate piece and that's for the uh, transformation which I will show off later. Uh, double joint in the elbow. Very nice bend in the elbow going on. Just a standard issue ball joint in the wrist. And because this was made way before they started making any of the other wing kits uh, that I've that you've seen on my channel, the, he does have the traditional 3-1 in a thumb style hand. Which is good and bad in its own aspects, and we'll get to that in a bit. Um, torso, we do have ball joint in the top and bottom of the torso, so it does allow for a decent amount of movement. Actually, a fairly nice bend in the torso, too. That lower waist, the waist area is a little loose for anything good to come out of it. The skirt armor, the back skirt, cannot get out of the way very much at all. It, been, it moves like that much, and that's it. The side skirts move out about that far, and the front skirts can actually move up out of the way entirely. So that's pretty nice. And there goes decals not wanting to stick again. I am going to this... I think I might eventually, like, take all the decals off of this guy and just redo them and get the water slide decals that they have for them. But anyways, um, no... Nothing special going on with the hips. It's a ball jointed hip and not even a thigh swivel. So it's just a ball joint. So it, it can bend up all the way this way and all the way back this far. But that's as far as it's going outward. So hopefully you weren't wanting to pose Wing Zero doing any high kicks because he can't quite do it. But the knee is double jointed so full bend of the, out of the knee and this knee armor does um is completely loose and that's just recycled from the wing gun number ka that came out before this kit did so which was actually the first wing master grade and um a lot of this kit shares or this is basically a recycle kit with a new back pattern it's essentially just the same as the wings here, or the original wing Verka that came out with the wing with new wings and new weapons. And also, I forgot to mention um, the kit actually does come with the option of swapping these white hands out for the standard inner frame gray hands. But I wanted to keep the accuracy of the wing zero, so I made the hands white. And, um, anyways, back to the feet. We do have double hinge in the, or double ball joint in the ankle. As you can see right there, we have one at the top and bottom of the ankle joint. So we do have all that amount of, nice amount of bending going on. And the toe can bend forward, and this ankle skirt piece, or ankle armor piece, can move up and down and get out of the way. So, there's that for articulation. And also, go ahead and get this out of the way. The wing articulation, it is pretty good too, but um, the wings are also holding up this kit. It does get pretty back heavy because of all that stuff going on back there. But the wings, uh, they do rotate on this piece right here. They do uh, swing forward and backward, as well as it rotates on this joint right here. And then we have a joint right here to flap up and down right there, as well as rotate on a hinge there so you can get pretty good amount of articulation just out of those wings and then these back wings here are on a uh, peg and poly cap so it just it can swivel back and forth like that as well as swing side to side and then lift up and that's pretty cool stuff it can do so but I'm keeping I'm using the wings to keep him propped up so that way he can stand upright for this review because he does get pretty back heavy 
and these little pieces right here on the bottom of the shoulder armor can pop out just for aesthetic purposes really I like to keep them kind of even between the other two pieces so there we have that go ahead real quick uh, size compare them up next to the original Gundam the RX-78 2 and as you can see as always RX-78 2 is going to be a l maybe a little bit taller like just a tad taller than wing uh, zero not too much it's at least a half a head height taller so yeah but it's not too bad it's standard height uh, wing zero is 16 meters tall whereas Gundam is 18 so it, it does show off fairly well and real quick display him I just wanted to do this up next to the Proto Zero that I recently reviewed because essentially in Gundam lore this is this is the original Zero that according to the manga for the glory of losers I believe um, this is the original Zero that uh, Quattro got his hands on and he upgraded it into that Wing Zero custom. But essentially, this is just showing off TV version Wing Zero versus the Endless Waltz OVA version. So, there's that. And uh, real quick, another one I wanted to show off next to is the, his other partner in crime out of the Endless Waltz OVA. Is... Death Scythe Hell. These two actually did appear in the same animated series together in these designs. So I just wanted to go ahead and show them off uh, together. Show how they look side by side. Now on to the accessories. Wing Zero doesn't really come with much. But essentially he does come with enough that he needs. So it's not that big of a problem really. First up, we have, as always, the tiny minifigure of Hiro Yui that I've got yet to paint still, which I'm actually thinking about starting to work on those soon, so some of my later reviews, if I catch up on painting those minifigures up by the time I get caught up on reviews, you might see some of them actually painted, so... And he does not come with a shield at all. But what he does come with is the standard beam sabers. And if you can tell, they're right back here. They sit kind of loose on my kit. I've heard some people say that they're kind of tight and hard to get out of there. But mine sit kind of loose. They flop freely. They actually sit in there pretty nice. It's just when they, they slide forward fairly easily. And we do get these beam saber blades which are the standard curved beam saber blades that we've seen in some of the other kits that I reviewed. Most notably, the Wing Proto Zero came with these beam sabers, but this time it's cast in a darker green. So we can just go ahead and take the beam saber handle, plug the blade on, and just take the hand, open it up and put the beam saber blade the beam saber in there and now this gets to be the big problem that I have with the beam sabers is they there is no peg coming off of the hand and no hook well this is just the hands in general there's no peg coming off of the hand and no slot in the hand in the weapon to uh, for a peg to go into so when it comes to trying to put the beam saber into the hand, the beam saber actually holds pretty nicely. It's not going to drop that beam saber. It's it's in there pretty well. It's when we get to the other weapon, which I'll show off in a minute. But first, before I ended up forgetting, I wanted to show off these um, machine guns that pop up out of the shoulders, which are a little bit of a pain to get a into but 
because really it's nothing spectacular to look at it's just open it up and there's a Vulcan sitting in there and I can't even get it to work right so I might be doing something wrong here which it slides off of the track pretty easily too so well, no, I'm not doing anything wrong, so that's really all that ends up getting to show, shown of it is those bottom barrels. So it just opens up. It's supposed to slide it out, I assume, a little bit so it doesn't fall back in. But you get that look, which isn't anything too spectacular. Easy to forget about, I know. Anyways, now on to the big weapons. And I mean big. We have the twin buster rifles. And here we actually have it labeled with decals. In case you forget which side. Focus. There. Twin buster rifle. Left side. And twin buster rifle. Right side. So in case you forget which side these are supposed to go in. And now the twin buster rifles, I believe, uh, last time I checked... He doesn't have a problem holding them individually. Well, maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's still a little heavy. It's not going to hold very well, but you get the idea. He can hold it. There we go. Actually, wanted to work this time. But it, it gets a little awkward because they're one little tap, one shake, and they're going off. This kit really could have benefited with a peg and a slot to go into the hand. But fiddling with it enough, you can get it into a pose to where you actually will hold on to them fairly nicely. Except for when I'm trying to talk about them. So there's him holding the twin buster rifles independently. And the twin buster rifles, like always, can combine together. And we accomplish that by folding in, out these panels. Coming back here and folding this piece back. And folding this one forward. They're little bitty uh, clips, so they get kind of hard to fold out. But once you get them, you can just interconnect them and connect all the pegs together between the two Buster Rifles. And there we have the altogether Twin Buster Rifle. And this thing is pretty cool. And there is a couple teeth back here, which this does help out with... Um, the final shot pose as it's dubbed by some fans where it would sit in the middle like right above the search eye and then it's just a matter of getting the hands and arms to work around the way you want it to to where he'd actually be holding on to the handle at least look like he's holding on to the handle it's it, it gets tricky to do considering the fact that it's not the best connection in the world for the weapon but you can get one hand there bring the other hand forward And as you can see now, the weight issues that come with this kit. And once again, like I said, 
this kit would benefit highly from using those uh, pegged hands, which I'll, I'll pause real quick. I can pause real quick and just get that um, set up so we can have that going on. All right, there we go. It's not perfect, but yeah, that's a pretty good example of how the how it looks holding the twin buster rifle doing the final shot pose. As I mentioned before, it does have that tooth where it goes into that spot where the uh, search eye goes and once again it falls out. So, good thing I'm done with that anyways. So, and of course, one last thing that this kit can do is it can te it technically has a transformation uh, for the re-entry mode, which it's featured in the, on the anime where uh, it's uses the wings and um, kind of protects itself from the heat of re-entering Earth's atmosphere. And I'll just go ahead and get the beam sabers put back, back away. And the kit can accomplish that by first rotating the arms forward at the uh, bicep swivel and taking these shoulder pads out and folding them down next up uh, get these wings up out of the way and take the legs fold the feet down does that joint come out at all? nope anyways just pull the knees back pull this piece forward and then rotate the knee back like that so we've got that compressed look going on with the knees. And do the same on this side. Just kind of fold that up, make it nice and even. Next gets a little bit tricky and I also forgot to mention that these wings can splay out too. You can open them up just like that. So and these back wings can splay open too, but I was going to get to that one in the transformation at least. So get the uh, joint for the wing rotated around and get the one on the poly cap to rotate forward. See, I've already lost two. feathers anyways uh, rotate the piece that's holding these feathers up uh, rotate that piece forward and then just kind of splay the feathers out a little ways and get that even with the center of the kit and then just do the same on this side with this wing and kind of get the wings together and they do line up and then there's corresponding teeth that fit in right there but it's not wanting to go you have to get it just lined up just right otherwise they get a little bit tricky there we go next up these back wings here just straighten them out and fold them out to the side and splay them out I believe well okay no what you want to do is you want to rotate them out here and then rotate them out here so they've got this look of a wing going on do the same on this side here and try not to detach the poly cap from the backpack and then get that wing splayed open and there we have the re-entry mode. Not anything too spectacular, but it's just meant to shield the Wing Zero uh, for Earth re-entry. So it can do it on its own without the help of uh, a container or whatever.
and it does look really nice. I do like the way this looks. Even with the wings draped over the front, it does look majestic and uh, does retain that uh, pretty cool look that the Wing Zero has. And just fold up the... And uh, one last thing it does come with that I was going to show off a little bit towards the end is it comes with the same kind of action stand that the Wing Zero or the Wing Proto Zero comes with. And in order to use that, hang on, these wings are wanting to be a little bit tricky with me, so. There we go. And in order to use that, there is a t uh, little piece right here that is kind of hard to get to. But once you get it unpegged, it reveals a little uh, bar that this piece can slide up into and clasp onto. It's kind of hard to tell when it's actually got a hold of it. There we go. So it can hold it up and actually on the bottom of the kit or on the uh, stand there's this piece right here which can actually house that little guy and keep him from getting lost. So, there's the stand. And real quick, just go ahead and get the wings. Set up back to normal. Oop, that piece, that wasn't supposed to happen. Alright, so we have that. Let's go ahead and just splay the wings out, kind of give it a nice look to it while I'm at it. Just, oh, come on. Oh, having problems on camera, what else is new, right? Actually, this way would be a little bit more natural stance for it. So, let's get the camera lifted up now that I realize that a lot of that got shot off camera. But, yep, there is the Wing Zero. Not even going to bother trying to display him holding the um, Twin Buster rifle like this. And real quick, I can show him... in flight next to his brother from another mother or father rather and that piece wasn't supposed to come off alright there we go wing zero both TV and OVA style. So, very nice kit. I do like it, even though despite its age, there is a lot of glaring issues, most notably in these hands and the Twin Buster rifle. The Twin Buster rifle is fine. It just needs a peg or something to hold on to it. The hands could use 
uh, could be good if they used a peg. I mean, given the age, it's kind of understandable. Now, if you want, you could always modify this and drill a peg in there and then use the hands off of another one of the wing kits, uh, one of the earlier wing, later wing kits that actually use the uh, swappable fingers. You could do that and it would have a, st a little bit more sturdy of a connection, but overall, the biggest problem I do have is those hands and uh, trying to use this buster rifle with said hands. And the other problem that I have is the decals, but that's not so much of a glaring issue. Uh, some people don't like to use decals, and I'm not one of those people, but if you are one of those people where decals don't bother you, then this kit wouldn't be that bad for you. It's just um, the weapon, the main weapon that this kit's going to be using, and the hands that it gives you just don't want to cooperate and it's a shame and otherwise this kit would be an excellent excellent kit nothing wrong with it but it's just a great kit nonetheless it it, it hovers there and looks really nice on shelf and um just overall i i do like this kit i would highly recommend it now it does have a little bit of extra work to do as well with the decals, as I've noted, mentioned. And um, the best way to get the search eye to look correct is by painting it um, clear green. And you can still use that uh, metallic foil green sticker that they have underneath, like I did. So I still have that reflective foil, and then I do have the um, actual green lens instead of a clear lens, which in the right angle it, it's noticeable so and that's the reason why I changed it that way but you don't have to do that if you get this kit you can do it any which way you want I just it's something I worked on and it's something I did to make it look better and I like the way it turned out but if you like this if you do if you're thinking about picking this kit up I do highly suggest uh, picking it up just be aware that there is a couple of extra things that um, to be aware of and the arms considering its age do not feature a full inner frame the shoulders and the forearms are what you see is what there is there's no inner frame in between the elbow and the hand and there's no inner frame between these pieces and there's absolutely no inner frame in the head design in the head construction whereas all the newer master grades of the wing kits do have some sort of inner frame. That's my review on the Wing Zero. Uh, once again, a very nice kit. Um, I do recommend picking it up if you want it. Uh, I don't think they would be coming out with a new version of this anytime soon, so this would be your best bet on getting now it is, like I said, an older kit. I believe this came out in 2004 versus the other uh, Master Grades that started coming out in 2009 for Wing. So, yeah, it's got its age behind it, but overall it is still a very nice build. It was very fun. I did like building it. And um, so, yeah. Now, out of the two... Um, if I were to recommend either one, I would recommend the Wing Proto Zero. It's a funner, it's a more fun of a build. There's not much frustration going to it. There, it holds its weapons exceptionally well. As you can see here, I can tap this thing forever, and those weapons aren't wanting to move. So, yeah, he's got that going for him. Anyways, this has been Ratchet Reviews. I hope you guys like this video review, and I will see you guys next time.